a story from unlikely sources. He loves to tell stories about maybe naughty stewards, dishonest folk, kind of pulling from Samaritans, if you will, even. He loves to pull a story to help explain. And it's interesting that he does that because sometimes it's easier to hear something about somebody totally different than oneself. Someone that you feel like, no, no, that would never be me. In this story, we have a rich man whose manager, whose, if you will, head steward, his head slave, has been accused of, well, just squandering. Accused maybe almost of, of laziness, of not doing what he's supposed to do with the master's property and wealth. The master is angry and demands an account. And to put it in a little context, that steward, he would have been sort of well educated. His life working for the manager would have probably been, would have been better than most. You know, he got to kind of get the first of, of things. And yet at the same time, he's completely subject to his master. The master says, you're out, you're out. And it's absolutely true because what would he do? He's too old to dig. And that is hard work. And if he fades, well, he will not last long. He's probably not well liked either. So he comes up with his scheme. And his scheme, it does sound a little sketchy. Change the bills. <coughs> and with it, he has endeared himself to those debtors because instead of having to owe a hundred vats of olive oil, it's only 50. And for that matter, he's managed to endear himself to his master because, well, the master finally got paid. Now, we're not to take this story as an example of good business practices. <laughs> that is not what it's here for. And there's often that desire to kind of want to figure out the calculations of that. But we see that the steward is commended for his shrewdness. He's being clever. He figured it out. The steward had come to a desperate point at recognizing he needed to get right on it and work out his salvation. His very life was at stake. And he figures it out quickly, shrewdly. And there is a desire to want to, you know, make this story about an honest steward, to make this story somehow a little less, I don't know, less scandalous, and yet here it is. This steward is being commended for being true, for acting. What? And Jesus gives a warning to the children of light. You know, the children of this age have figured some of this out. And you guys, you're kind of slow to catch up. I'm reminded that a couple of years back I was on a committee. And it's strange to think of this thing as being a committee. To put up a blessing box. If you're familiar with the blessing box, it's a lot like those little libraries. But instead of books in there, we were going to put uh, toiletries snacks, food, so that whoever passed by, if they needed some food, if they needed uh, a pair of underwear, a pair of socks, a toothbrush, a toothpaste, <laughs> they could come by and grab it. And if you had excess, you could leave it there. It's a great idea. It's wonderful. You see it all over the place. Now, we had someone who came out immediately and said, you know what, look, I've got this plastic container. We can tie it to a pole to get started. 
people didn't like that idea. They really wanted a wooden box. You know, glass front, shellacked. <laughs> it needed to stand about this tall. No, maybe about this tall. We're not sure. But oh. as of this date, I'm pretty sure that we did not get that blessing box up all. <laughs> And meanwhile, the opportunity has passed. That first suggestion of, well, look, let's just slap this thing out there and wrap it around a pole and we'll get started. Inelegant, oh, distasteful, can't do that, it looks sloppy. Myself. Oh boy, what a missed opportunity. Just was. Just is. It's a missed opportunity to offer blessing. It's a missed opportunity to offer salvation. A missed opportunity for our own salvation. And that oftentimes, within our very walls, within the church, we can be like that. We will kind of feels that we would rather sometimes meet on it a little bit more, kind of rubbing our hands like so. I'm not sure that that's perfect, and the opportunity can move past us. We haven't acted shrewdly. We haven't acted quickly enough, and the opportunity is past. this past Thursday we had our vestry meeting and one of the things that we made a decision on that I thought was excellent, right on, was that for the month of October, all loose offering will go to the ERD for hurricane relief. The whole month of October. It's a total opportunity. It was fast. There wasn't an ad, oh, I don't know, maybe. We'll do it. Seizing the opportunity. That's what we're asked to do. That is how we work it out. Let's not let those opportunities pass in pursuit of 